Hey guys! So I realized after my last video that I made a goof and I forgot to tell you how to contact me if you wanted to do beta reading for me without having to put your personal email address in the YouTube comments or something for other people to see. So anyway, I made an email address specifically for beta reading purposes and you can contact me at this email address if you are interested in beta reading or if you do have any feedback on my prologue and first chapter that is on my website under the work in progress page. If you did read that, but you decided it's not for you, then you can contact me at this email address right here. So that's cswellswrites at gmail.com. So anyway, without further ado, because that was a shameless plug and a poor attempt at me fixing a screw up from my last video, uh, we're going to move on to talking about beta readers and some things that you might want to do or not do as a beta reader. By the way, I'm not doing this video just to be one of those people that's like, if you're going to beta read for me, you have to do this, that, and the other thing. No, 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 not my intent. I'm super not picky. All I ask is that you be semi-tactful. If you're going to tell me something's horrible, like compliment sandwich it or something. I don't know. Just... Don't be a dick, okay? That's all I ask. But other people who are looking for beta readers who are a little bit more serious about making this a big old career and stuff might rule you out as a beta reader or let you go as a beta reader if you're being, if you're doing some of these things or you're not doing some of these things. So we're gonna talk about that for a minute. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is obviously, and I kind of touched on this a moment earlier, you don't wanna be a beta reader who's just being a jerk that's dragging the person down and you're not enjoying the book at all. If you're not enjoying the book at all, you're probably better off just telling the person, hey, sorry, this isn't my thing. I'm going to bow out and stuff and leaving. Nobody's going to have any hard feelings about that, but they are going to have hard feelings if through the entire book, you're just giving them really negative feedback and just be like, this sucks. I hate all this. I hate the characters and stuff. If you're going to do that, then save yourself the pain of reading through the rest of the book because if you really really hate it that much this is a waste of your time you don't want to read it and it's not going to make them feel very good either in counter to that what you would want to do is try to either if you're gonna have to tell them you're hating something in the book like i mentioned earlier maybe compliment sandwich it be like i really liked how you did this and this in this scene the one thing i didn't really like though was this it kind of drove me up a wall Anyway, maybe compliment sandwich it a little bit. So you start off with a compliment, something you did like, then tell them about the thing you didn't like or you hated or whatever, and then be like, but I know that you can totally fix it by this because I've seen how good you do in this other scene or something. And I think that would be an effective way of giving negative feedback that you have to without you feeling uncomfortable having to give negative feedback because you know that you're doing this thing to kind of like cushion the blow and also to where you're not going to break the heart of the person who you're beta reading for. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do, and this is a pretty common consensus about beta reading that I've seen from other YouTubers, and which I completely agree with, is if you're going to give negative feedback or positive feedback or any feedback whatsoever, try to give an actual reason to it. I mean, you don't have to all the time, but if it's something that you feel is pretty critical or pretty important to the story, giving a full rundown of why you did or didn't like it or you felt neutral about it can be really, really helpful for an author to actually pinpoint what it is that you did or did not like. If you did like it, then it helps them know, okay, people like this, I need to do more of that in the future. If you didn't like it, then they go, oh, a lot of people didn't like this. Well, maybe I could jump ahead and edit some of that because I know I did that in a different chapter that I haven't sent them yet. And maybe they can get a head start on fixing that in other areas of their writing if that's a common thing that they're getting uh, negative feedback about. Now, this is gonna be an unpopular opinion as far as what I've seen from other YouTubers on the beta reading process. A lot of YouTubers say, tell your beta readers, don't bother pointing out typos to me, don't bother pointing out grammar errors to me, uh, don't do that. And if your person that you're beta reading for does ask that you don't bother with that and you just tell them the overall story elements and all that jazz that needs to be fixed or that you don't really like or what your opinions are on them, then I'd suggest going with what they're telling you. But personally, I think that if you can crowdsource your grammar and typo errors before you send it to an editor, why wouldn't you? So 
I will say that for me personally, if if anybody's doing beta reading for me, you're more than welcome to point out all my grammar and typo issues. I'm just gonna tell you right now, don't drive yourself nuts doing that because there might be a lot. <laughs> so this one I don't even want to bring up because I feel uncomfortable telling people, get me stuff on time. But it, I think we can all empathize that if you send something to somebody and you're waiting to hear back whether or not they liked it or not, it's stressful the entire time you're waiting. So if you're going to be a good beta reader, be courteous if you're if your person who is sending you stuff to beta read asks you to have it done within a certain time frame, if if you think that's reasonable, by all means, like bring it up. If they're telling you, hey, read the whole book in a week or something, tell them if it's unreasonable amount of time. But if you've agreed that this is a reasonable amount of time to get this done, get it done in that amount of time, get the reading done and get the review back to them so that they're not sitting there biting their fingernails, freaking out that either you've completely abandoned the quest and you're not, you're just too scared to tell them or that you hated it and you're too scared to tell them. The other thing that at least for me, I wouldn't mind is if you aren't able to make the deadline, you realize that and you send an email saying, Hey, I know we said I was going to get this to you here. I can't cause some stuff came up and I'm still going to try to get to you or whatever, or some stuff came up. I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to be able to reliably get you stuff. That's awesome. That's great because then people can stop panicking that you just hate it. <laughs> I know this one's super uncomfortable, but you got to tell your author what you think they're doing wrong and what you don't like. I know we're trained from childhood that you're not supposed to tell people that you don't like things, what they did and that you're supposed to be polite and nice and say you love it no matter what, but that is not the point of beta reading. I have a beta reader slash critique partner who shall remain nameless and who I don't think will ever watch this video and I hope not. And, and if she does, I love you and it's nice to have one person in my corner who does do this and, and it boosts my spirit. But I do have a beta reader who refuses to give me negative feedback, will not, even when I'm, I know for a fact this is garbage. And all she will do is point out all the things she liked about it, which is super nice. And I will say that everybody should have at least one person like that on their team that's a critique partner or something, just because it's a nice boost between the other critique partners who will tear you to shreds and not think a, a second thing about it, but that's what you need, so that's why you want them. But it's nice to have that like little angelic beta reader occasionally, but I already have one of those. So uh, for any author you're reading for as a beta reader, who already has one of those to fill that quota, you got to give them the negative feed. Lastly, this is one I haven't really seen covered so much in other videos. So I wanted to touch on it, but try to be respectful of what your author is asking for you out of the beta reading process. For example, if they're saying specifically, just give me this kind of, this kind of information. If you notice big plot holes, that's all I'm looking for at this stage. Try to be mindful of that and don't send them a ton of extra feedback because maybe that's not what they're looking for. The other part of this is that I am aware that a lot of authors will ask their betas not to share any of their work any with anybody. Obviously this entails not sharing it online and making stuff available that might mess up their marketing plan or any of that to outside sources or stuff that might be potentially embarrassing issues in the story for them later on, even though it's something that they're going to correct, making it well known to the public. That's, that's a big thing that would be problematic. But along with that, a lot of people who are authors who get beta readers together also ask that you don't share it with friends or family or your spouse or your children or any of that jazz. So you're going to want to try to be respectful of that. If they, if they make it known that they don't want you sharing it anywhere, then you're going to want to follow that because then it's already out in the world and people can already get it. And why are they going to buy your book if they can already get it for free? It's like a tour. It's basically a torrent at that point. It's a pirated book, but it's an imperfect pirated book. It's like one of the ones where the CGI effects aren't finished yet. And like, you can still see the green screen in certain parts and like the wires on Wolverine as he flies through the air. Anyway, anyway, that's the point of that. So I think that's all I had to cover. Uh, those were the things that I could think of as to kind of do's and don'ts or how to be a good beta reader for your authors. Not because I'm being a snot and being like, be a good beta reader for me, but more like I just needed to have some sort of actual 
substance on this video. Also, oh, last thing, because I forgot to bring it up because I meant to bring it up at the beginning of the video. It's at the end of the video now. I screwed up twice on this beta reader thing. I did want to mention earlier that if you want to be a really good beta reader, you can also offer to exchange beta reading with authors, which I did want to mention. If you have a book that you are trying to get beta read and you need some help with that, I'm open to beta reading in exchange for beta readers. I, I'm pretty flexible as far as my genres are concerned that I read. Anyway, uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna quit taking up your time because this video has gotten much longer than I thought it was gonna be. So you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.